Hi everybody, Joe Broncato, the Airgun Scientist. Today we're going to talk about filter basics. What to do and what not to do. Okay, so first of all, when we say filter, we mean a moisture filter. Yeah, it is a particulate filter or a particle filter too, but it keeps out small birds, children, and things like that. But uh, really, we want it to keep out moisture. So uh, this is one example. This is our alpha filter. And this is our P3 filter, which is a much larger unit. This is for really big uh, compressors. This will work with every shoebox, Alpha, Omega, Corette, whatever you have out there. And then uh, we're also going to talk about the do's and don'ts of a filter. Okay, so first of all, the proper stuff to use inside a filter is molecular sieve. Some people are using silica gel. We have a little sheet here basically telling you molecular sieve versus silica gel. And if you go on our web page, which we'll put on at the bottom of the title, we'll show you where that is, you'll see that the molecular sieve, hands down, is what you want to use, okay? So that's what's inside our filter. Now, you'll notice that some of our filters, as in this case, has carbon in it. And that's because this is a true breathing filter, okay? You could use this to breathe with, and it removes out flavors of uh, oil and etc. Okay, so if you're just using it for paintball and air guns, We'll often just uh, give you all molecular sieve so that you have more molecular sieve which absorbs the water. Now this stuff is extremely hygroscopic or water grabbing, okay? And what that means is you can't leave water in a filter. Like in a lot of filters like this that people that try to copy us, they just open this up, they throw in some silica gel beads down here, okay? And they have the air coming in and going out. That won't work okay maybe the first time because yeah you got all this moisture coming in drips and drops and it gets to here and it wets the filter media okay you have to have the filter media separate from the metal container okay you never want the filter media to touch the metal container or acid will leach out well it does leach out of the uh, molecular sieve and will, well, acid, metal, this is the pressure vessel. You don't want acid touching your pressure vessel, okay? Uh, getting into the threads and doing all that kind of stuff. So from a safety point of view, we don't want that, okay? So what you want to do, first of all, is prevent the metal from getting touched by putting your beads in some form of a container to prevent that, okay? That's, what th that's why all of ours are packed like that. Secondly, you hear that word packed. If you don't pack the beads in, if you just kind of loosely throw them in there, you get what's called channeling. As the air goes through, instead of going through the beads, it just kind of goes around them. That's called channeling, and that basically makes it worthless. Reason number two. Reason number three is, remember what we said is you have to keep the water itself, the condensate, separate from the filter media. Well, our unit, our filter's up here. Okay, see all this space down here? We bleed our moisture out at the end of every uh, filtration cycle after you're done filling your tank. If you don't do that, if you don't have that capability, if this is what you have, and people think, well, I just put the beads in here and it works, this moisture that's trapped in here, unless you bleed it out immediately, this extremely hygroscopic water grabbing stuff will suck that water right up and be useless from then on. So yeah, it worked once, but after that day, the moisture you left in here makes it void, no good, soaked. So you have to keep the unit. We put an arrow up, we keep the stuff separate. We have a void down here for the water to collect and then a purge device here. Now. We're calling this our alpha filter. This is just one variation of it. We make it for the alpha, the omega, the, the Corette, the shoebox, you name it, we'll customize it for you. Um, some of them we have that they, uh, they have a quick disconnect on there. Some of them we just put a hose on there. I kind of put the quick disconnect and a hose to give you an idea that we can do either. Um, but that's how the alpha filter works. Now there's another thing that needs uh, for a uh, filter to work. High pressure filters work best at high pressure. If you're just 
pumping air into here and letting it flow right out, well, more correctly, if you're pumping air into here and letting it flow right out, it won't work. Air is like a sponge. The more you squeeze it, the more you'll wring out the water, okay? So a filter is always put on the output side of a compressor. And it's held under pressure by a pressure maintaining valve. Some people call it a PMV. The function of that PMV is to keep that pressure high up. So as you start your compressor up, and this, this goes up to 1,000, 2,000, about 2,200 or so. At that point, there's enough pressure in here now that the water is dropping out and the filter media has a chance to grab it. If you don't have that pressure maintaining valve, it's going right out. So you want to have that PMV on there. Then after the pressure builds up, it starts to come out, it works. If you don't have it with the PMV, it's just shooting right through it, not building up pressure, not working on you. So we've hit, you don't want to use beads that are loose. You want to have a void down here where you can bleed out the water. You don't want to leave the water in here because it'll grab it. You need a pressure maintaining valve to keep the pressure so it works. And you don't want the beads in contact with the cylinder because of the acid that leaches out of the beads could or will weaken the vessel. And that's a real big bad deal. So those are the points that we're trying to make. We make all kinds of filters from the smallest alpha all the way up to our P3. Um, this is obviously a, a chunk of uh, aluminum. It's a beautiful piece of machinery. Uh, we can make any size filter you want. And uh, we're known in the industry for having extreme quality. If you have any questions, please contact us at uh, Air Tanks for Sale. We'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, you don't have to buy from us. We'll just answer your questions. Uh, that's about all I have to say. Uh, take care. God bless. Have a great day. And don't forget our Facebook page, Air Tanks for Sale, as well as our uh, YouTube channel, The Air Gun Scientist. Please like those pages. Follow them. Uh, our YouTube has a lot of discounts on it that we always offer. Uh, it also has uh, notes that we're going to post this video on the Airgun Scientist. So if you follow that and uh, like our page on YouTube, you'll be hooked up. So take care. God bless from Joe Broncato, the Airgun Air Scientist.